I told myself there is no reason to ever need to do this again, that we'd always have other things to focus on instead of sanding and priming, and I would not feature it in videos again specifically, but that's not the case this week. We could not progress any further on our prop shafts or propellers because we are still waiting on a laser that is going to let us get the angles absolutely perfect before we go any further with glassing. So of course there's still a million things to do on the boat and the only thing I could like really focus on for filming was me continuing to work on those coves. But I did try to make it as interesting as possible focusing on that with, you know, different camera angles, music, things like that. So with your constructive criticism, I would love to know what you think about focusing on that topic once more, what you liked, maybe what you would have added or done differently in there, but we still hope that you enjoy it and the second part of our Vancouver Island adventures at the end. One week after starting this task, and I have been doing some other things too, but I am determined to make visible progress today down in these holes with the coves that I've been working on. So this morning, my last little thing has been kind of just trying to like shove the corners to get a nice blend with all these three sides. And if there's anyone out there that has tips on how to get that done without like 16 attempts, please let me know. I would gladly try pretty much anything right now. So these should just need a really light sand Just doing the last little bits to kind of fill these parts that will blend it into the other portions. But when I get that part done, I'm going to mix up some of our total boat fairing compound and then just take a roller and go over these coves so I can actually see. It looks like I'm doing it right after going over it multiple times from multiple angles. So that way I can move off of this project and then we can fair all of these surfaces one more time. And since I will have some of that primer already mixed up, I'm going to go through and just do these cabinets in the head, like a little outboard space here that's been done practically forever, as well as the space here where our sink is going to sit and extra storage. Those are things I've been working with way too long because I get into little hiccups with the polyester frame compound, especially as we're getting back into the heat. And now that I work with the epoxy frame compound, I've realized that it's like much easier because it's a little bit thicker, which for personally, I find it better for those little minute spots. So once I prime those areas with an epoxy primer, anything that needs to be touched up, I can go back with the epoxy fraying compound, which personally I like working with better. So that's just going to be something too that's done in this area, as well as trying to do this last seam on the outboard side of the shower. And then this whole hull should hopefully be ready for a new coat of primer in the next couple of days. That is about 29 degrees for everyone else in the world. But a real feel of much warmer. Now rats can shine, jokers got civil life. Holy Mary sing songs in the wet rain. Walk ahead, walk ahead. Now every new day is a new fire. I'm to my teeth, call me a liar. Building as you rip, someone show me someone. Working through the hottest part of the day right now where temperatures inside the tent are 91 degrees but the real feel is got to be like 10 degrees warmer than that topping out over a hundred but I am determined to get the primer on so now that I have sanded all those areas and cleaned them up we're going to put on our total boat two-part epoxy primer and that needs 15 minutes of induction time so I'm just gonna mix up a couple of ounces since I don't have a huge area to cover let that sit for a little bit <laughs> probably grab a drink with Tucker since he's just getting off work right now and turn a nice breeze outside and then once it's inducted I will come back and get it on those surfaces okay nice spend a minute mixing 
mixing that together. Okay, I've got the face thoroughly mixed now. Pop open part two. You're looking pretty thick too. Ugh. That's just always the way you are. These are a one-to-one -one mix ratio. So I think what we'll probably do on here is go up to this mark, which will give us just over eight ounces. And between the coves of the steps and the outboard cabinet in the head, I think that should be enough. If I have more, then maybe I'll do the backs of the uh, steps too. So whatever, it'll get used. Yeah, this is a nice little stir. And now we spend the next 15 minutes outside in the breeze enjoying a seltzer because oh, look at this sweat rolling off my face right now. Give me a drink here, boy. Nice. I got uh, two red stripes left. Oh, yes, please. Got our nice sticker here. best way to pass primer reduction time that I can think about. <laughs> wow, and an hour has passed by so quickly. Funny how a couple of red stripes can do that to you. But luckily it came back in the tent. It has dropped two degrees. So it's feeling a lot better in here. All I have to do now to prep those surfaces is give them a styrene wipe and then we can start painting on that primer. covered our surface yet and I'm starting to think that this eight ounces is not gonna get me far so might be doing most of this painting tomorrow. So to be honest, this whole task was supposed to see how the primer went onto the coves now and see if they actually are good enough to continue. And it doesn't look bad, but what I really, really want to do now is just do this cabinet inside the owner's head because that is actually progress forward. So I didn't make up enough tonight. That is obvious. I will continue tomorrow on the steps, but from what I have, I'm just gonna go ahead and start working myself forward so that at the end of the day, I can feel like I got something done. I just realized right now that I never put any thinner into this primer. It's supposed to get 10 to 20%. So no wonder it is feeling like glue as I put it on. Whoops. <sighs> so eight ounces of the high blood primer has just gotten me through this and one set of step coves, good to know. Kind of sucks that uh, I wasted an entire roller to do this because we're running low. But the fact is, it's the end of the day, nearing seven o'clock. I am just drooping sweat. I'm ready for a shower and a burger. So I will come back to this in the morning and we'll get all of the other coves done. And to be honest though, I'm just happy I made progress. Like, Felt like I've been waiting on this fort ever. It feels nice to have some primer on it, get it all one color, kind of closer to the finished product.
We now enter part two of our series after having left the Xantrex offices in Vancouver and took the ferry over to Vancouver Island to meet up with our friends from Barnacle Boat Security. Our first weekend in Vancouver Island had us doing a number of things, mostly running around to see various sites. On the way to Sean's house for dinner, Brandon took us and Odd Life Crafting to see Hatley Castle which we only knew as the Charles Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters, AKA the X Mansion. We didn't go inside, but the grounds were really cool. Then at Sean's house, we gifted the Barnacle guys with the most Maryland gift we could think of to thank them for hosting us. Oh, that's cool. This is our first Perk and Bach, Bach, Bach? Bach. Yeah, Bach. yeah Perk and Bach. Uh, oh, this is, Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, These are rad. Oh, that's so cool. And within it, a sneak attack to ice Sean. I know. Oh, got silver back. Well done. In your own house. How dare you come into my house? The way it sounds to you. I'm just waiting for this weekend. Friday. Yeah, yeah. We're all living in danger. Yeah, you know. Nice. Oh, wow. Good job. We ended our night at a minor league ball game. Where Duca looked like he wanted to put on every layer he owned. But Brandon was right at home in these 13 degree temperatures. Shorts and duka. <laughs> Shorts, duka. Canadian, Brazilian. <laughs> crazy cookie house, look at the crazy cookie house. So cute. The next morning, Brandon and his wife, Garyelle, took us out to see a few of their favorite local spots. The first being the Crazy Cookie House, located off the side of the road in a fairy tale like shack with delicious treats waiting for us inside. We ate our cookies in a tranquil park with great walking trails and a bubbling stream, with a waterfall not much further away. The big stop for the day was Bilston Creek Farm, a family-owned lavender farm run by one of Brandon's friends. There were a lot of lavender-infused home goods and foods. and there was no way I could leave without trying their lavender gin and tonic. For those staying overnight in their glamping tents, there was the most serene outdoor shower facing the forest. It was the perfect spot to spend an afternoon relaxing and prepare ourselves for a long journey in the car the next day. In the Barnabas. Duke is getting all of his stuff packed. <laughs> and there's Matt and Sean up there. The bed I'm gonna be sleeping in. So we are road tripping up to Tofino. The drive from Victoria to Tofino is normally three to four hours through charming paved roads, but Due to an ongoing forest fire, the main road shut down about 90 minutes into our journey, and we had to spend a good portion of our time on bumpy, unpaved loggers' roads. And so much dust was getting kicked up that at times Brandon could barely see the road ahead of him. Just stopped the cars and we're going kind of bushwhacking right now through this really dense forest to try and get to a creek to see if we can do some gold panning. Here's my feet and I have to try and get down through that. So there's Duca up there at the road. Hi Duca! And now I have to get through this to find the rest of the group. Okay, I just made it down 
the little trickle of the waterfall. Oh my gosh, I've got like moss on my arm. Pretty sure it's all in my hair. And it's time to see if the payoff was worth it. Take the last few steps here. And it opens up into, holy crap. Roberta, this is amazing. It is. This is it so is. clear. Do you think I can find gold here? I don't know, are we gonna try? It's not that cold actually. Oh. I thought it would be colder than this. Oh yeah, it's tolerable. Yeah. I don't know if it's gonna pan out for us to pan gold here, <laughs> but Matt's got a soaking wet foot. The other guys are still up by the road and I think we're just gonna have taken this in as a nice sightseeing stop on our way to Tofino. My gosh, I cannot believe we have to go through this to get back up. Oh, keep low. And when Sean got back up to the road, Brandon was waiting there to ice him. Oh, yes! Yeah, was I was hoping that was gonna be Matt, but... Yeah, it was... <sighs> <laughs> oh, nice! Nice! They're very cold. Does that feel good? Oh, God, my eye, I can't even see the camera. My eyes are watering too much. And back oh, in the cars. Although we were excited to get to Tofino to start our adventure, some stops along the way just could not be missed. Just pulled off to stop at Long Beach, which is right before Tofino, where our Airbnb is getting the first looks. And this is totally like the cool, misty weather I expected from here. And according to Brandon, these are like baby size waves. These are what maybe I'll try on, but what he's gonna go for is gonna be a lot bigger than this. Get excited, Brando. So stoked. We's here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aw, oh, yeah. Look at this cute little place. Okay, oh, nice, nice. Wow. That's where I'll be bathing tonight. <laughs> oh, jeez. <yeah. laughs> oh, hot tub. So make sure to join us next week for our last Vancouver installment where we enjoy this little slice of paradise.